Thank you, Adrian. Um, Adrian is the Superintendent Minister for the six Methodist churches within File Borough, and I thank him for being here with us this evening in the absence of uh, the Mayor's Chaplain, Alan Clark. The first item uh, is now item number four, the information items, the Mayor's Announcements. But, but first of all, and before that, I'm just reminded that uh, some members may have uh, interest to declare. Does anyone have declarations of interest, please? Councillor Zakali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have to declare a personal and prejudicial interest in anything pertaining to the Lowther Trust. Thank you. Councillor Fiddler. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Equally, I have a personal prejudicial interest in dealing with any special special And uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Felfel, thank you. Yes, thank you. Councillor Rigby. Thank you very much. Being aware of that, I think the way we are conducting the meeting tonight is for us to leave certain items which deal with those matters um, until after when the members can leave the room. Members are reminded that the procedure rules for tonight's budget meeting differ from ordinary council meetings. Those procedure rules are attached to the agenda for members' attention, and I would um, ask you all to be aware of them fully in the conduct of today's meeting. Agenda item number three, pages five to eight. I will propose from the Chair that the minutes of the meeting held on the 26th of January be confirmed as a correct record. And I am happy to second that, Mr Mayor. And item number four, the Mayor's announcements. There's not a lot to say, really, since our last Council meeting, which was only five weeks ago. Uh, judging the windows for Valentine's Day on a wet uh, day in, uh, in February, uh, it's not always the most exciting of events. Uh, nevertheless, um, there have been a number of activities, and um, I think the Council's art collection continues to be enhanced by the friends of the art collection. I think we're very fortunate that the way that the Council's art collection is being improved, thanks to grants that the outside bodies are getting, and thanks also to the County Museum Service. I've uh, spent quite a lot of time in Kirkham recently at St Michael's Church, um, probably more than any other church in the area. And um, you, many of you will be aware that the Reverend Richard Bundy there is now the Church of England Area Dean. Um, on a personal level, we got a new granddaughter last Thursday weighing just over nine pounds and everybody's fine and finally I'd like to remind you as I did at the last meeting of the Mayor's Ball we're already over the 70 mark with regard to tickets that have been sold and I hope that as many of you as possible are able to attend at the Grand Hotel in St Anne's on the 27th of March Friday the 27th of March thank you very much Chief Executive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I only have one urgent item this evening. Um, unfortunately, our colleague and friend Bernard Judge has significantly deteriorated over the last 48 hours, and a request has come from Marcus that um, he's not to receive any visitors. Um, I'll keep members updated uh, during this week and next week um, that Marcus will be sending the same message out to all staff. We have a card here that will be circulated this evening for members to put some comments and thoughts about Bernard. Thank you. Item number six, questions from members of the council. I understand there are no questions from members of the council this evening. 
Item number seven, questions from members of the public. Again, I'm informed that we have no questions from members of the public on this occasion. So we turn now to the meat of tonight. Um, item, agenda item number eight, the medium term financial strategy, which includes the general fund, capital program, and the treasury management for 2014-15 to 2018-19. Those are pages 10 to 109 in your agenda. Before I invite the leader of the council, Councillor Susan Fazakali, to introduce the budget item, oh, I'd like to remind members that the budget will be debated and voted on first with the omission of the exceptional cap capital items of the Fettled Memorial Gardens and the Lowther Roof Scheme. This, as you will appreciate, um, is to enable those people who have to leave on those matters to be here and fully involved for the main purpose of the meeting. So those two exceptional items will be debated and voted on separately with the members that have expressed an interest on those items excluded from the Chamber. And those are the two items on page 57 dealing with the Lowther and with the um, Fretland and Parish Council work. Now I would like to ask, please, the Leader of the Council to introduce the bu budget apart from those two items, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, colleagues, I'm delighted to stand before you this evening to introduce the 2015-16 budget for File Council. I'll shortly hand over to the finance portfolio holder, Councillor Karen Buckley, who will propose the council budget and take you through the details. I'm just the warm-up act tonight, ladies and gentlemen. However, as leader of the council, I would like to express how proud I am that this council continues to go from strength to strength, delivering high quality services with a diminishing resource, and to thank all those, both members and officers, who have contributed to this success story. Members and officers have worked together to deal with austerity cuts year on year for the last four years, taking the council to a robust financial position, one that many other local authorities are finding very difficult to achieve. While many authorities across the country are having to cut services, lose staff, and borrow to support their finances. <coughs> At Fylde, we are maintaining and improving services, whilst at the same time bolstering our finances, so that we can continue to perform in the challenging circumstances that are set to continue for the life of our financial forecast. The Council has taken every opportunity to review what we do and the way we do it in order to achieve efficiencies that we have created the capacity to manage more effectively with the resources we have. We find ourselves in an enviable position with a sound financial position today and for the foreseeable future services that are not subject to cuts or a reduction in standards and high levels of customer and staff satisfaction. Members of this council have had to make tough budget decisions over the last few years to ensure that we continue to deliver value for money to our residents, whilst at the same time fulfilling our statutory obligations. The budget presented before you tonight will ensure that this council stays on course. There is investment where needed, but at the same time we will retain the capacity to deal with the challenges that are clearly outlined in the risks included in the report. This Council has approved sound and sensible budgets over the last few years. 
They have been the foundation for putting Fylde in a healthy financial position at a time when circumstances in local government are tougher than they have ever been and are set to continue in this mode. I would ask that my colleagues in this chamber support the proposed budget for 2015-16 so that this council can continue the excellent work we have achieved to date. It is with great pleasure, Mr Mayor, that I now invite the portfolio holder for finance to propose the 2015-16 budget for file council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This Conservative budget delivers a freeze in council tax, a freeze in special expenses for those who would pay it, a contribution to reserves to keep us safeguarded against future volatility, a contribution to capital schemes thus keeping our borrowing low, maintenance of high levels of service despite being put at risk by a Labour Lib Dem pact at Lancashire County Council, and a living wage for filed council employees. The proposals have been out for consultation to all partners and stakeholders, parish and town councils, and have been available on our website. The proposals have been before our policy scrutiny committee for members to raise queries and make comments. The proposals have been tested by our finance director and his team to ensure they are robust. Any alternative budget or amendments put forward tonight have not been subject to this amount of rigour. Turning to the report, it starts on page 10 of the agenda and I would like to highlight uh, the salient points and pick up on the queries and consultation responses that have already been made. The first few sections of the report set the scene and the budget process. And so I'd like to turn to page 28 and talk through the, through the following sections. Page 28 at section 13, the report talks about our reserves position and the purpose of reserves. Our budget proposals for 15-16 deliver general fund reserves of almost £5.1 million, which is a healthy position, and some may view that as high. And I would caution against anyone allowing the, the level of reserves to simply burn a hole in your pocket, but instead set them in the context of filed risk register and our medium term plans rather than focus exclusively on short term considerations. Section 14 sets out the background of reductions in government funding to councils and the offer of freeze grants, all of which filed has taken, rather than impose council tax increases on residents. Mm -hmm. Over the page addresses the revenue support grant for filed, which we can see is reduced by 28% year on year. It also addresses the localisation of business rates and gives detailed information on the new homes bonus. These all feature as high risks for filed, either because of possible further reductions or a change of government direction. The other high-level risk is set out on page 34. Which is the end of the waste recycling cost-sharing arrangements with Lancashire County Council, representing a reduction of £763,000 per annum from 1819 onwards. To address this, Fylde has indicated their agreement to join a Lancashire district-wide review and Cabinet have indicated that the results should be known before commitment of significant capital expenditure to the waste service in our capital programme. Turning then 
to the capital programme. The funding of capital programme is from either specific grants such as, for example, um, Disability Facilities Grant or Heritage Lottery, capital receipts from the sale of assets, revenue funding, earmark reserves or borrowing. And the risks to the capital programme are detailed on page 41 onwards. And members will note that none of those are high level risks. Finally, and I realise I'm going through the report quite rapidly, the, this report addresses our Treasury Management Strategy and the relevant policies are set out at Appendices K and L. And we are asked to uh, accept these tonight. Much of the detail set out in these policies are regularly before our Audit Committee. But I would like to draw members' attention to our present and projected borrowing position, which is set out further ahead on page 108. You'll see a bar chart on page 108 which indicates our capital financing requirement and also our actual borrowing levels. Our current borrowing level is 2.3 million, projected to reduce to 1 million in 2017 and zero in 2020. Our budget proposals, turning to those, include a freeze in council tax and special expenses, as I've already mentioned, plus the proposal set out in Appendix F, and I'll take you back to page 55. to move these budget proposals save for the exceptional capital schemes. <coughs> the other revenue growth proposals are to introduce a living wage for filed council employees, provide budget provision for membership of the Green Partnership Grant Award Scheme and additional budget provision for the maintenance of grass verges. And as mentioned by Councillor Redcliffe at the scrutiny meeting, this addition is as a direct result of Lancashire County Council reducing their contractual payments. The capital schemes which are over the page, Appendix F Part 2, Capital, are an expanded and updated programme of vehicle replacement for continuing service delivery, further support for Kirkham Town Centre Regeneration Scheme, for Woodlands Road Ansdell Regeneration Scheme, for schemes in St Anne's, Lytham, Lytham and Staining, additional resources for footway maintenance, a new memorial garden at Lytham Park Cemetery, a new toddler's play area at Fairhaven Park, and remodelling of an area of the sand dunes at St Anne's. I'd like to address the responses to the consultation that relate to these proposals. They are included in the papers if members want to have a look at those. They are at the very end at Appendix M on page 118, at the very back of the papers. But these are the consultation responses to the budget. Firstly, a suggestion um, that we employ an arts officer. And I'm pleased to reassure Ms Stringfellow that a working group from Community Focus Scrutiny Committee is seized with a review of our arts service and have made recommendations to Cabinet, one of which is to explore the introduction of such a post. The latest update on this work is actually contained in the Cabinet Minutes of 14th of January. Secondly, Mr Gilbert suggests that the medium-term financial strategy should include council tax increases of 1% going forward rather than 2%. 
The reason 2% is used is because a proposal to increase beyond this limit would require a referendum. The proposal for last year and the forthcoming year to freeze council tax does in fact net a sum slightly more than 1%. A lack of certainty in government funding over a period of years means that it is difficult to plan freezes or indeed increases for any length of time. In response to Little Eccleston with Larbert Parish Council's comment on rural filed, I would say that all the services provided across the borough, so for example the waste collection services we provide for licensing planning, are continuing without asking any more for any more money from residents. And having a look, having a look at the parish precepts and the levels of the parish precepts, many parish councils are indeed freezing or reducing their precepts at this time. Filed, of course, is freezing. And I note that Little Eccleston with Larbrook, their precept is rising by 5%. Filed is freezing their council tax and yet maintaining a very high level of services across the borough. The fourth respondent, Mr Cridland of the TUC, welcomes the introduction of the living wage. And he asks, who will not be covered by it? So my answer to that is workers who are not treated as eligible are apprentices and agency staff until the agency worker regulations trigger entitlement after 12 weeks. Pay awards for staff are subject to national negotiations between employer organisations and unions which take into account all relevant factors such as the rate of inflation, the finances available to the council and the required staffing levels to provide high level services to residents. I am pleased to note that 97% of filed employees are satisfied with the council as a place to work. Finally, in relation to mention of government proposals, whilst I am in favour of initiatives to eradicate youth unemployment, the introduction of such a policy is subject to the outcome of the general election in nine weeks and should be considered on its merits at the appropriate time. Before I move the recommendations formally, which are members that actually set out on the desk, so it's a separate paper set out on the desks in front of you, and they include all the precepts right across the borough. Before I move the recommendations formally, may I express thanks to our Section 151 Officer and Finance Director, Paul O'Donoghue, to the Deputy Section 151 Officer, Paul Swindles, and the rest of the finance team, together with all budget holders across the Council, for the level in which they have embraced the need to make savings and deliver underspends where appropriate. They will see that money reinvest, that money will be reinvested for the benefit of their service areas and for the benefit <coughs> of filed residents. The opinion of our Section 151 officer is that filed finances are robust for the life of this forecast. And that is on the back of a record of a full term of council tax freezes by this Conservative administration. I am pleased to move all the recommendations as set out on the paper on the tables together with the council tax resolutions save for the exceptional capital schemes. And I have a seconder, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Mr Mayor, I am more than happy to second the recommendations. Thank you. On page three of your agenda, Appendix 1 sets out the procedure rules to which I referred earlier. And we are now up to point three on those, uh, in, in that appendix. And it is now my role to ask the Leader of the Opposition, Councillor Odes, and um, non-aligned members, 
which I think is Councillor Mulholland and Councillor Hayhurst, to give an indication only at this point if they will be presenting an alternative budget or moving any amendment on this budget apart from the exceptional capital items for in the date on the substantive motion. Yes, Councillor says yes. Councillor Mulholland? <laughs> Councillor Hayhurst? No. The debate then is uh, now open for discussion. We are now in a position where we'll debate when any member can indicate they, they wish to speak on the substantive motion. Anyone wish to speak on the substantive motion? <laughs> Councillor Nolte, please. I didn't really want to speak, but seeing as nobody else is, I think it... Uh... It makes, the, makes life worthwhile if, uh, if people say something. So, like other colleagues, I would like to congratulate Paul O'Donoghue and the finance team on yet again producing a robust budget in the current challenging financial climate, and also for their time and patience in dealing fairly with all groups. I recognise that we are facing some high levels of risk in the next four years, and I think we're very fortunate in Fylde to be well placed to meet, meet them. I still have concerns that we continue to rely so heavily on the new homes bonus to balance, balance our budget. My other concerns, however, are, whilst I hear Councillor Buckley's warnings, that the level of reserves, even taking all these challenges into account, are too high at over £5 million by the end of this financial year. And I feel that it is time that this council relaxed a little on savings to ensure that we are meeting the council's vision to achieve excellence and to meet the key priorities for the whole borough as set out on page 19. Should some of the high-level risks come to pass, as they surely will, such as the reduction of the revenue support grant and the lessening or scrapping of the new homes bonus, then that will happen nationwide and something will have to be put in place to allow all councils to continue to function. We will be better placed than most to meet this challenge. So I do feel that filling a few vacancies automatically and even adding a few new posts to improve some of our services could be afforded at this time. I will not move an amendment, but I hope that this can be looked at in the next few months by the new council, perhaps, and taken on board. I'm also concerned at the proposed use of some of the capital reserves that have been squirrelled away over the last few years from what I believe should have been spent on staffing and services are now to be used on some of the leading group's pet projects. What stands out to me as well as, as that, is that is that much of the development attracting the new homes bonus have taken place in the rural areas, notably, and I would say this, Wesson and Westby. And yet the only rural areas to benefit are Kirkham, which at least serves us all, and Freckleton, which has taken no development at all. When, when first introduced, the new homes bonus was designed, we were told, to help communities to cope with the impact of new development. This has never happened, not a crumb given to those areas. For this reason, I cannot go along with some of the capital spend part of the budget, though I am very content with the vast majority of it, and I must congratulate all involved. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Eaves, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yet again, a sound, sensible and responsible budget uh, from uh, the administration with borough-wide benefits. 
Um, this is the sixth budget that I've been, uh, this budget partly uh, involved in, but the previous five years it has been, uh, that I've been involved in. I'm in immensely proud at the remarkable financial progress uh, during very difficult times that this cabinet has been able to produce. This being the fifth successive year of no council tax increase, this council has, gone, has undergone some considerable reorganisation to manage the continual reduction in government funding for local authorities. There has been a marked shift within this council from the old local government attitude uh, to one of a team performance and in, in the concept of a, of a remark that I uh, discussed with the past chief exec and also our current chief exec of what would you do if it was your money, um, the chief exec and his finance, finance team and the 151 officer are to be congratulated in assisting putting this budget together. And it is with that background that this administration has been able to make six years of improvements with no restrictions to services, providing excellent value for money, and it will continue to do so in the future. This administration oversaw the budget right-sizing exercise, which has produced considerable surpluses to improve the capital reserve fund, and it was my ambition uh, as leader to produce budgets that were balanced. And I'm delighted to see that this budget does exactly that. And the forecast for the next three years produced exactly that, a balanced budget with robust capital reserves. It's no wonder that the latest residential residence figures are so high uh, that Fylde is in such a wonderful place to live. No surprise <coughs> that Fylde was voted the third best council in the country in a recent press poll. The leader portfolio holder and the cabinet are to be congratulated on the production of this proposed budget, as I say, with benefits filed wide. And I hope that they receive the, 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 the commendation for actually doing that. I'm sure our residents will continue to remember the last six years of growth and success. And I'm absolutely sure that this Conservative administration will continue to provide for the residents of Fylde with the same determination in the future. There are risks in the future. File Council is better placed than a lot of other councils to deal with those risks. And incidentally, there have been risks in the last six years which this council has addressed and managed, and it will do so in the future. It is in a very healthy position. Mr Mayor, I will be supporting this budget. Thank you, Councillor Eaves. Does any other member wish to speak before I call upon Councillor Holmes? Councillor Davis. <coughs> David, can you switch your... Certainly. Thank you. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, firstly, I just wanted to confirm that I'm at the right meeting. Um, I thought we were having a budget meeting tonight, and it seems to have turned into a party political broadcast on behalf of the Conservative Party. The leader made a point when she introduced the item of thanking the officers, and I think the chief exec and the officers do a fantastic job, and I think it's wrong for the politi politicians in it to take the credit for it all. I think we have a fantastic council, fantastic officers, and I do think that using tonight as a party political broadcast on behalf of the Conservatives is wrong. Thank you. Councillor Ford, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to echo the comments that um, Councillor Nulty made um, about the fact that there's a large balance. It's been obvious this year that if you try to get anything done, the answer often comes to it's a resource issue. And the budget for litter bin replacement was spent up by November. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. 5.1 million in reserves and you can't get a litter bin. Yet you've got officers trying to reduce waste. We've got people picking litter up. 
but you can't provide the bins for people. And I think that's just a, a, a micro indication that maybe the budget well, may well be right sized, but I think it needs to be a little bit more flexible just to allow for those things. If you want street signs replaced, if you want litter bins, I think there should be money there. The officers do a great job and try and help out, but I think sometimes we're tying their hands when, um, when we make requests. And we make the requests on behalf of our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Silverwood, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just really like to just respond, if I may, to uh, some comments that um, Councillor Eaves has made uh, with regard to um, this council showing pride or this uh, cabinet showing pride in, in, in filed being in the top three um, councils within the country. I think really what I feel saddened about is that there is no real humility or acknowledgement being shown by the, these councillors to the volunteer and voluntary groups that we have with, within our borough. We all know um, that we're so dependent upon the in bloom groups, those that are prepared to pick litter, whether it be on the beach or on the streets. Um, we've got fundraising constantly ongoing for to keep our swimming baths open. And uh, there's all the parks groups, the friends of the parks that raise the, the money to, to make the parks happen and, and take place and flourish. Um, I also feel strongly that this council cannot take credit for the quality of lives of the residents in our borough and I just think it's appropriate for the acknowledgement to be made. Um, I agree we thank the officers. We'd be in a very poor state if it were not for our um, Section 151 officers and um, I also feel strongly that this council should be listening to them um, far more when we've got these high risks uh, listed in, in our budget papers. So please, you know, just, just tip the cap to these people that we rely on, our residents, making our borough look so lovely that we can show pride in where we live. Thank you. Thank you. And can I give Councillor Silverwood another's assurance that my job as non-political uh, mayor, or as happy mayor is non-political in that sense, spend a lot of my time doing just what you've said saying to so many people that we endeavour as a council to find the finance to oil the wheels but really it's thanks to all those people throughout the borough who then really turned the engine and it's something that I've particularly gone out of my way because I believe it as well to say to all the people who I meet and greet throughout so and I, I think this is happening as well when I've heard cabinet members um, Maybe today isn't the best of occasions to be re-echoing all these things, but I'm glad you've said what you have said. Anyone else wish to speak before I... Sorry. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would just like to come back on <coughs> Councillor Silverwood's remarks about volunteers. Um, I didn't really think that this was a forum for airing opinions about our wonderful volunteers, which I, having as leader and in previous incarnation, although I still am portfolio holder, I suppose, uh, any opportunity that I have had in Cabinet when there's been developments that have involved uh, friends groups, I have never missed thanking and stressing the importance of the friends groups. I have always mentioned our volunteers in any articles I've been asked to write for the press because this is a wonderful borough for volunteers. I'm sure and I know that a lot of uh, my fellow councillors and I too am involved in volunteering in the borough. It's almost the norm, it's not the exception for people in this wonderful borough of ours to volunteer in one form or another. But quite frankly, I don't think that the budget meeting is a time for um, a breakdown of the work of volunteers. If it had been, I would have mentioned it myself. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Zachary. Is there anyone else? <laughs> Councillor Andrews? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I just say uh, very briefly that a little while ago in my ward we needed a waste paper bin regarding the Councillor's remarks. Within 48 hours, one appeared by the bus stop. There was no indication whatsoever of any slowness in supplying or meeting that demand. 
Ashton. Councillor Ashton, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. First, I'd like to thank uh, the Cabinet and the Leader for producing a superb budget. The last time. Superb budget. <laughs> I'd also like to, to thank the previous Leader because he did a lot of the groundwork that uh, brought us to this stage. I think they've done an excellent job. And I'd like to remember, remind members of the opposition that the Conservative group uh, run this authority. And that's why we've produced a 0% council tax rise for the last six years in a row. And Councillor Silverwood, surely that's the best way to repay our residents by making sure that one of the biggest bills that their household has is kept to a minimum as far as possible. Unlike the Police and Crime Commissioner and Lancashire County Council, who are both raising their preset by 2%, unlike this authority. Councillor Nulty, I think you were reading the, a different, different report to me, uh, because I can see all the good things in uh, this budget, and I think it's a budget for all, all people in Fylde. People in Kirkham are benefiting, Ansel and Fairhaven, Lytham, St Anne's, Staining and Freckleton. This is a budget for all the people in Fylde. Now moving on to, um, to the state of our finances in, the, in this borough. We have the highest level of reserves for the last at least 10 years. Now I call that prude financial management. Our borrowing is at the lowest for the last five years. Again, prude financial management. So I say again, Mr Mayor, we should thank the Cabinet for all the hard work, the long hours spent poring over these figures to make sure we produce a 0% budget. I'm proud of them and I'm proud to be a Conservative. Thank you, Councillor Ashton. It wouldn't be the same without your contribution. <laughs> <laughs> Any other member wish to speak, please? Um, I'm one of the, the newer members in the first uh, four or five years of this administration. Um, so I've never been in the position of reviewing a, a whole administration before. And I try, difficult at times, to always look in a very balanced way at what has been achieved. There does seem to have been very prudent, sound fiscal management. Good reserves, freezing of the council tax, expenditure always being constantly monitored at a time when we know that income and funding streams are always going to be challenging. The picture I see is that this is and should be a team effort. Certainly I'd be the first to recognise um, great competence within our finance team and the officers who have performed remarkably well. In a Conservative administration, working with a Cabinet, those are facts. I'm disappointed that nobody in opposition can find something to celebrate and gain satisfaction from in the report that we've just heard, because my view is is that every member should feel, as a councillor on Fileborough Council, that they have also made a contrib contribution to the sort of place that we all live in. You're quite right, it isn't just about the officers. It isn't just about a Conservative administration. It's about a council doing their job at times being challenged and scrutinised and criticised, but getting on with the job and doing an excellent job in extremely challenging circumstances. I think the report that we've just heard brings us lots of good news, but at the same time there are warnings. We hear 
some criticism of reserve levels, but at the same time, because I am in the same meeting as everybody else, I've got the same information in front of me, surely everybody must look at that information and understand we've got reserves, but we've got huge risks that lie ahead in a very volatile economic climate. <coughs> The fact that we've managed that situation up to this point and we're able to de declare objectively that this council, the finances of this council are in a robust state, I think brings credit on everybody associated with this council. I think people out there who live in Fylde will understand that despite all the challenges, they're living in a, a very nice part of the world with no services cut despite the cutbacks in terms of funding. The satisfaction ratings are there for us all to see. I like to think that everybody has contributed towards this and I feel slightly disappointed that the really positive message in this budget has somehow missed some of our members. <coughs> I commend the budget, I commend the work of all the officers, all the councillors that have made a contribution. I also commend the leadership that has been involved in the decision making and the situation that has now been created in Fylde. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Redcliffe. Maybe I can say, sitting where I do and looking into everybody's faces, that I have detected a degree of mutual satisfaction as I've uh, watched around. But is anyone else wishing to say anything before I call upon Councillor Oates? Councillor Henshaw, please. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm saying that Fylde is the best council in Britain. I mean, my two major concerns in Fylde are the closure of the police station, which preceded a state of serious armed robberies, which you're all aware of in the past few years. And my second concern is the length of time it is taking to reinforce our sea wall. I personally highlighted this over ten years ago. Two weeks running, it was a front page for the Good and Sent Out Express, and little has been done about since then. Although in Wire and in Blackpool, you can be aware, they have spent over, over 200 million on their sea defence. Because why? I, I'd like to know the reason why it's taking us so long. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Mrs. Oates, please. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, as always, I offer thanks to Mr. O'Donoghue, Mr. Swindles and the finance team for all their hard work in preparing this budget and making sure that our finances are now in a much healthier position than was the case only a few short years ago. And I remember the debacle of the £600,000 overspend on waste. <laughs> um, our thanks must also go to all our workforce who've worked so hard to down Inside the council without impacting on our services. It's these efforts which must be praised as they have enabled us to have a balanced budget. The budget must, however, come with a health warning. We're all unaware of who will be governing this country in a few short months' time, but we all know that austerity is a buzzword when it comes to local government finance. Our government support grant has been savagely cut by approximately 40% in recent years and we're told it's likely that another 60% could be cut in future years, meaning that we could see a falling grant from the 3.5 million received last year to only 654,000 in the years 2017-18. 
Conversely, we've seen this council depend more and more on the new homes bonus to balance our budgets and to allow us to freeze council tax and not to have to cut services. This has meant that we must deliver more and more housing, losing more and more of our green fields, which is of course a very crude way of enforcing government diktat on house building. If a Labour government is elected, they've already suggested that the bonus will be removed. And even if the Conservatives are returned, there's no guarantee that they'll continue to provide this form of funding. So it would be downright foolish to rely on it. This council has received a government freeze grant for the last five years, which has had the welcome impact that our residents have not seen any increase in their council tax charges during this very difficult financial period. However, this has had the adverse effect of keeping our base budget at the same level it was at five years ago. Had we increased it year on year by the rate of the ceiling set by the Secretary of State, we would have seen our budget increase from 5.581 million in 2010-11 to 6.075 million in 15-16. The estimated income foregone by this council as a result of taking the freeze grant is £705,000 in 2015-16 and each year thereafter. If you look at the forecast, you'll see that officers have included an increase of 2% per annum from next year through to 2018-19. If we don't increase by this amount, or are prohibited from doing so by the government, this could result in draining our reserves earlier than 2018-19, as shown in the forecast. So, we'll have to find other ways of making ends meet. We may have to look at making cuts to leisure services, parks and gardens, the arts, swimming pools and theatres, or increasing income by increasing charges, or charging for things we don't presently charge for, like green waste. Maybe a combination of all these things. If this happens, then capital schemes being looked at at the moment, which will have revenue implications, will surely not go ahead. I think that we must, during the course of the next year, consider consulting widely with our residents to explain how the cuts have impacted on our budgets and what the implications are for future budgets. And we must ask them whether they prefer to see cuts to services and increases in charges, if so, where, or alternatively, whether they favour increases to the council tax. With, having said that, I'm happy to agree this budget, with the exception of the capital items which will be debated later in the meeting. But I do move that during the course of the next financial year, a wide consultation takes place with our residents to explain how the cuts have impacted on our budgets, the implications on future budgets, and ask them to consider whether, if it's necessary, they would prefer to see cuts to services and increases in charges, or alternatively, whether they favour modest increases to the council tax. And I so move. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Rawls, can I just clarify that you're uh, moving the budget with adding on that wider consultation? Yeah, I'm supporting the budget, but I am moving an amendment that we do have a consultation du during the course of the next year with our residents, a wide consultation, uh, in case, um, you know, to explain how the impacts w have affected us and um, if we do find ourselves in problems to see where they feel they would like to see our services go, whether they'd like to see them cut, whether they'd like to see charges increase, or whether they prefer to see uh, a modest increase council tax. I've got, I've got the amendment here. Thank you. Do you have a, a seconder, please? I'm happy to second that. I reserve my right to speak later. Thank you. That's now being debated. That is the only item now in front of us for debate. Could I ask for any speakers, please? Councillor 
Well, I'm it. First of all, well, sorry. first of all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, I'll do it we don't way. know what the amendment is, so how can we debate it? No, then I'll have it read out. It was the one that was just read out for us by Councillor Mrs. Owens. I'll clarify it for you, and Councillor Alter, correct me if I'm wrong. It's to uh, approve. The, the main part of the budget, apart from the two exceptional items that are going to be discussed separately, and I therefore move that during the course of the next financial year, a wide consultation takes place with our residents to explain how the cuts have impacted on our budgets, the implications on future budgets, and to ask them to consider whether, if it's necessary, they would prefer to see cuts to services and increases in charges, or alternatively, whether they would favour a modest increase to the council tax. Okay. Everybody clear? Councillor Armand, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, <coughs> I th I Please, Councillor Rhodes is supporting the budget, and I think we can save a lot of time and effort on this amendment. We, can get, we don't need the amendment. I'll vote against it. Um, quite simply, in the next couple of months, if she wants to lead the independents out to campaign in the election to increase council tax, and that's going to be her mantra, we are campaigning to increase council tax, then she has a consultation with all the people. She has the direct ability to let the people vote on that. She has the ability to talk to them all immediately, and she can get an immediate response. And if she wants to campaign on increasing council tax, that can be her mantra. But I will be voting against this because we can do it that way and we don't need to spend any more council money on that. Um, I, I think that Councillor Armit would do well to listen uh, when amendments are being moved and he might then understand what the amendment's about. Councillor Collins, Councillor Collins, please. Yes, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Olds wasn't saying what she wanted. What she was saying was she'd like to ask the people of the borough what they would want. There's a difference. Thank you. Councillor Ashton, please. Mr. Matt, I've got, I've got to agree with Councillor Armit. You know, we're going to have the biggest, we're going to have the biggest referendum for, for four years on May the seventh. Surely, this is a chance for the electorate to decide who they want to control this council, and the choice is going to be quite clear. They're either going to want a Conservative administration run by this excellent cabinet, similar to run by this excellent cabinet, who have, who have, who have managed to uh, freeze the council tax for the last six years. And don't forget, you know, glibly say, oh, we'll increase the council tax base. That's the council taxpayers' council tax bill. And after the mortgage, pretty much all council taxpayers, that's the biggest bill. And I, you know, just to glibly say, oh, let's just increase the base. What that actually means is we're actually, we're actually going to increase the council tax that the residents of Fylde are going to pay. So they're going to have a, ch a, a choice on May the 7th. They either want a Conservative administration who's going to run this authority properly, or the opposition who are going to increase council tax. It's simple. I know who I'll be voting for, and I know who my residents will be voting for. Councillor, Councillor Duffy, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, having listened to the last couple of speakers, I think uh, even more so than before, I'm in favour of Councillor Oates's uh, motion, because really what it, what that motion was about was explaining the options to the electorate and asking them what they want. And after the last couple of speakers who are obviously just trying to make political points and trying to put words in, in Councillor Oates' mouth, I think it would be good if, uh, if the options were explained to them as well so that they understood that it's about options and finding out what the electorate wants rather than just trying to make this into a political debate, which it's not. This has got nothing to do with party politics. It's got to do with whether we should inform the electorate about what the options are and ask them about which path they would want to take. And then, whoever happens to be leading the council can either listen to them or not listen to them, but it's just about giving people information and asking their opinion. That's all the amendment's about. And I personally don't have a problem with telling people how things, what the options are, and asking their opinion about what they would like. Thank you. Councillor Silverwood, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I think it's an excellent recommendation um, that Councillor Oates has put forward, purely and simply because, as Councillor Duffy has um, just said, when we when we um, speak to our residents when we inform them as to actually what is going on um, and when they're aware of what is go what's happening in this council look what happened recently they voted to get rid of the cabinet once they knew what was happening with the cabinet once they knew there was just seven people making decisions behind closed doors and our residents in the borough voted very strongly that they were they were glad to see the back of that if they knew what was really going on by not increasing um, the council tax base and what may and could happen as our 151 officers are advising us what could happen in 2020, I think they'd be very, very keen to support those who are trying to help them. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak before we vote on this amendment? Beckett. Councillor Beckett. Yes, Mr Mayor. I don't think half of the people have been listening about what's been going on. Purely and simply because we've heard that there's an election coming up. We don't know what government's in. But they're coming out with all these ideas that they're going to cut, going to cut this, going to cut that. And it all comes down to us local governments who've got to try and find the money. The Section 106 officers have suggested that it should increase slowly over the next few years. And what Council Rhodes is suggesting is that we go along with their recommendation but also get the public involved to support it. Councillor Ackers, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I will be supporting fully the budget proposals. I think it's excellent and I don't think it needs to be said anymore that the finance team have done a brilliant job and the portfolio holder has done a brilliant job as well, together with the conservative administration that we have had for the last few years. Uh, Councillor Rhodes... Um, recommendation seems to be to be nonsense in the face of a 97 percent satisfaction rating with the council um, I think that speaks for itself and I don't think we need to waste any any of our five million pounds uh, on costly and time-consuming consultations they only get their rabble rousers to the various groups that they speak to and uh, they say that people don't know what's going on. People only know what's going on when they tell them their version of what's going on. Uh, everything else is in the council videos, it's in the newspapers, it's in the public consultations which are here. People, public can come here and hear whatever is going on and what uh, the Conservative ad administration have achieved in the past few years. Um, I shall be supporting the budget proposals. I shall be voting against the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Counsel Sorry, Councillor no. Denalty, please. Well, <laughs> purely and simply, um, Councillor Rose's amendment is simply asking the electorate, giving the electorate the choice of whether they want to, we want to maintain and improve services in these challenging times and times of austerity, or whether they wish to simply carry on freezing the council tax regardless. It's got nothing to do with the, the robustness. We've all said this budget is robust. We're talking about the future and the way things are likely to go, and simply asking the electorate, it's called democracy, allowing the electorate to have their own opinions, regardless of whether they're Conservatives or anything else. We've no doubt which way Councillor Ashton will be voting. I don't think that needed to be said. Thank you. Councillor Karen Henshaw, please. I would just like to put uh, a point to Councillor Ackers. There's 97% that she mentioned are actually staff satisfied to work at Fylde, not residents. That's what it said. Right. Well, I think that's possibly the. Is that the final contribution before I ask Councillor Buckley whether she would wish to sum up on that amendment, please? You do? Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, it's astonishing, isn't it? Um, Councillor Nulty says our reserves are too high, and yet she says maybe we should be putting up council tax. Um, this is about prudent use of resources. Um, the amendment seeks for us to use taxpayers' money to go out to do a survey. Uh, we don't know what uh, form this survey is to take. We don't know how much this survey is to cost. This is trying to bind the next administration. We're going out to the electorate on the 7th of May, and uh, the next council can make the decision as to how they consult the next year on the budget. And we all have the opportunity, as has been said, out in the campaign to engage with our residents and our electorate and see what their uh, vision is for Fylde for the future and whether they or not they are satisfied with the use of our resources here at Fylde. I do not support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now vote just on the amendment and uh, as has been outlined in Appendix 1, this needs to be a recorded vote. No, the amendment it doesn't. It doesn't need to be a... I'm sorry, I've been corrected. Would you like it to be a recorded vote? Have we got seven people or the necessary number of people? Yes, we have. <laughs> I'll ask the monitoring officer now okay. to read out names and uh, please say... Yes, yes, Mr Mayor. If, if members could indicate if they're for, against or whether they're abst abstaining, please. Councillor Ackers. Against. Councillor Aitken. Councillor Ackroyd. Councillor Andrews. Councillor Armit. Against. Councillor Susan Ashton. Against. Councillor Tim Ashton. Against. Councillor Beckett, Councillor Brickles, Councillor Buckley, Councillor Chedd, Councillor Chew, Councillor Clayton, Councillor Collins, Councillor Craig Wilson, Councillor Cunningham, Councillor John Davis, Councillor Leonard Davis, Councillor Donaldson, Councillor Duffy, Councillor Eaves, Councillor Fazakali, Councillor Fiddler, Councillor Ford, Councillor Goodrich, Councillor Hayhurst, Councillor Henshaw, Councillor Hotwood, Councillor Jakes, Councillor Little, Councillor Barbara Nash, Councillor Edward Nash, Councillor Nulty, Councillor Oates, Councillor Pounder, Councillor Presswich, Councillor Redcliffe, Councillor Rigby, Councillor Silverwood, Councillor Singleton, Councillor Speak, Councillor Threlfall, Councillor Wilder, okay. the Mayor, Councillor Easton. As usual, I will abstain. And Councillor Henshaw, the Mayor. Sorry, four. Okay. So just give me a moment. Uh, Mr Mayor, that, that amendment has been lost. Um, there were 16 for the amendment, 28 against the amendment and one abstention. Thank you. Does anybody wish to make any further amendments before we go back to the substantive motion, please? Not spoken on the substantive motion. Do you want to say anything? Does anybody who has not spoken on the substantive motion wish to speak now? Before I ask um, Councillor Buckley to sum up, <coughs> Councillor Buckley, please. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, the messages coming from the opposition are quite inconsistent. Um, there are suggestions that our reserves are too high, and then there are suggestions that perhaps we should not be freezing council tax. Um, and there are suggestions that we shouldn't be mainstreaming the new homes bonus. 
Um, and, but we should be uh, using that across the borough, perhaps there's a suggestion as well to, to use it across rural files, but then if that's the case, um, what do we do about our services and that would deplete our reserves. So it's quite a circular argument really and the balance to be struck is between um, prudent use of our resources and not burdening the council for the future. Um, and also, it does strike me the fact that if you calculate how much council tax we have forgone by not freezing, then we would be so much better off. But my approach, and a conservative approach, is that is money, people's money. That is taxpayers' money. We do not take money from taxpayers unless we have to take money from taxpayers. And when you look at the finances of this council and the level of the reserves and the high level of services that we are delivering, it is shameful to be saying, look at the amount of money that we have foregone. And just also to correct the misnomer about the new homes bonus. New homes bonus is paid to this council once a, once a property is built, is owned, and is on the council tax register. The majority of such homes for which we have received new homes bonus have been built across Lytham St Anne's. And I say that again, though the majority of homes built for which we have received new homes bonus are across Lytham St Anne's. And so, and we do not restrict our capital spend to Lytham St Towns, not at all. And you will see that from our, from our capital programme proposals tonight. But if you were only to do that, then according to that calculation for new homes bonus, you would be spending the vast amount of money across Lytham St Towns. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, we have just this one, the substantive motion in front of us. Um, I think I'm right in saying that we have to have um, a, a vote in a recorded, a recorded vote. vote. Um, monitoring officer, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Again, if members can indicate the for, against, or abstaining. Councillor Ackers. Four. Councillor Aitken. Four. Councillor Ackroyd. Four. Councillor Andrews. Four. Councillor Armit. Four. Councillor Susan Ashton. Four. Councillor Timothy Ashton. Four. Councillor Beckett. Four. Councillor Brickles. Four. Sorry, go on, go on. Councillor Buckley. Four. Councillor Chad. Four. Councillor Chu. Four. Councillor Clayton. Four. Councillor Collins, Councillor Craig Wilson, Councillor Cunningham, Councillor John Davis, Councillor Leonard Davis, Councillor Donaldson, Councillor Duffy, Councillor Eaves, Councillor Fazakali, Councillor Fiddler, Councillor Ford, Councillor Goodrich, Councillor Hayhurst, Councillor Howard Henshaw, Four. Councillor Hopwood, Four. Councillor Jakes, Four. Councillor Little, Four. Councillor Barbara Nash, Four. Councillor Edward Nash, Four. Councillor Nulty, Four. Councillor Oates, Four. Councillor Pounder, Four. Councillor Presswich, Four. Councillor Redcliffe, Four. Councillor Rigby, Four. Councillor Silverwood, Four. Councillor Singleton. Four. Councillor Speak. Four. Councillor Threlfall. Four. Councillor Wilder. Four. And then Mr Mayor. Four. And Councillor Karen Henshaw. Four. And Mr Mayor, that's clearly carried. Thank you very much. Um, I think now the people who have declared an interest, if they would leave, and then I will invite Councillor Buckley to introduce the exceptional capital item for the Fettle Memorial Gardens, first of all. 
So we deal with the Fettleden Memorial Gardens first, and then afterwards we'll deal with the... Which is the other one? Lather. The Lather. Councillor Oates, Oates. Councillor Oates, you wish to say? Yeah, before we start, Mr Mayor, can I just make a point that um, when um, individuals speak, uh, it doesn't mean that they have the view of the whole of the uh, opposition councillors. So when Councillor Buckley uh, makes a statement that um, that is the case, I think she should be corrected there. Um, we've got many speakers, they'll all give their own views. It doesn't mean it's a view of a particular group. I think that's a very fair point, that independents are independent and uh, can say what they want, as I think most other people choose to. <laughs> Councillor Buckley, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The second uh, budget proposal, then, uh, on the capital grants, the capital schemes. Um, this concerns a capital grant of £50,000 as a contribution to the restoration and improvement of the Memorial Park at Freckleton. It is an exceptional scheme because of the exceptional circumstances that give rise to the formation of the Friends of the Park Group. And to give some background, I would like to read out a letter received from Freckleton Parish Council, which was dated last May. The Friends of Freckleton Memorial Park, which was set up in January 2012, support the regeneration of the park and are keen to improve both the site's appearance and, crucially, the facilities and opportunities that it offers the local community. With this in mind, the group approached the site owners Freckleton Parish Council and Falborough Council as its current management and maintenance <coughs> officers for assistance. Both councils are supportive of the idea in principle. The process will be supported with development time enlisted from the Environment and Community Project team at Lancashire County Council and design support from Mark Wilde's team at Fowl Borough Council. This will result in a coherent and detailed master plan for the site which can be used as a basis for a phased approach to its regeneration. Freckleton Memorial Park is dedicated to the memory of the 61 people including 38 children who died in August 1944 when a USA Air Force Liberator bomber crashed on the village school. The disaster remains one of the worst air crashes for <coughs> civilian casualties in the UK. The park is situated in Freckleton East Ward of Foul Borough. The design brief is concerned with the regeneration of the park to provide a community facility that is accessible and suitable for use by all ages and abilities. Freckleton Parish Council has pledged financial support for this project and would ask if Foul Borough Council would also pledge financial support. Mr Mayor, I mentioned the budget consultation earlier and the consultees and the responses and one of those uh, relates to this particular proposal. The Parish Council of Little Eccleston with Larbrex suggests that other sources of funding should have been sought or should be sought and this same theme was raised at the scrutiny committee with a suggestion, particular suggestion, that a bequest had been made to the community of Freckleton, which could be accessed, and as could the, rem the Memorial Trust. Members have had circulated responses from the parish clerk in relation to the restrictions placed on both these sources of funds. It remains a challenging task ahead for the Friends Group to source ever-decreasing grants and funds in order to fulfil their aspirations for the park. The scheme is in the sum of 150,000 and the grant requested from Falborough is 50,000 pounds and for them to have a park to make it a fitting and yet enjoyable place for their residents. 
And therefore, Mr Mayor, I am pleased to move the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Fazakli, are you second? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I am happy to second that recommendation. And you're, you're reserving your right to speak, or...? No. I don't need to speak on this. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Odes has indicated she would like to speak. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, um, I asked several questions at um, the policy O&S um, because when I saw uh, this request, um, I felt that it could very easily set a precedent. We do have 15 town and parish councils in this borough and um, if we um, accept uh, this bid tonight then it could uh, possibly open the floodgates to the other town and parishes and I know that I've already heard several of the town and parishes say that they will probably come forward. So that was the first reason. Um, as has been said by Councillor Buckley, the letter was from the Parish Council. It wasn't from the Parts Group. Um, Freckleton uh, set up a Parts Group approximately three years ago. And um, I know, having set up a Parts Group in Kirkham, exactly the processes Parts Group have to go through. Firstly, they have to get uh, a group, they have to go out to consultation in their areas, and they have to draw up a master plan. When that master plan is drawn up, uh, they can then uh, speak with an officer of the County Council who will help with external funding. Freckleton has not yet got to the stage where it has applied for any external funding. My town in Kirkham uh, worked extremely hard and we raised £300,000 in, uh, in about 18 months. Um, none of it came from this council, it all came from external funding. And I feel that this bid by the parish council is a little premature because um, the uh, parks group itself has not yet uh, attempted to get any external funding. So on that, those grounds I think it's premature. Um, I then asked whether um, there was any income at Freckleton because I was aware of the fact that they received a bequest probably in the 70s or 80s and it was said it was around a million pounds. Um, I have looked into this myself and as has been pointed out by Councillor Buckley we have had correspondence. I'm told that um, uh, nearly half of the money that was bequested by Robert Rawstrone uh, was used to provide a sports uh, centre for the village um, and the clerk has actually told us that uh, what is left is um, approximately uh, £579,000 that is, uh, has been put into a trust by the parish council all the parish councillors are trustees and um, I've also seen the will um, I I'm a trustee myself of, of a trust and I know that in the past uh, we had a trust for Melton Grove uh, where um, the trust was varied. I've, I've been a member of a trust which has been varied and it is possible to vary trusts. And I do believe that when a parish like Freckleton is sitting on £579,000 we should be asking them whether it's possible for them to vary the trust and I would say that it's, this bid is premature until those questions have been asked and I would like to ask um, a solicitor um, information on that, I'd like them to see all the paperwork uh, because I do believe that it's quite wrong for um, 
a body to have such a large capital reserve to then come and ask for part of our capital reserves. Um, it's rather like me saying to this room, I'd like a new car, will you all give me £200? And you asking me how much I've got in the bank and I'm saying there's 50000 there. You tell me to buy my own car. I feel that the questions must be asked. I'm not saying we shouldn't give this money to Freckleton. I'm saying that we should satisfy our Ourselves, that all those questions have been asked and that we know exactly what the rules and regulations are in relation to that. We then get to the fact that when the crash occurred in 1945, there was a public subscription that people from all over the country gave to that fund. Uh, the Americans gave quite a substantial sum, I believe, but nobody can really find out what's what. It's all quite shadowy. Um, and I know people in Freckleton, I know a gentleman who was actually involved in the crash who has said he's asked many times how much was raised, what happened with the funding and um, what it's been used for and he's never been able to find out. I believe that that information should be made available to us. I've been trying to find out and I, I believe that um, at the present time uh, the uh, charitable trust concern has approximately £122,000 in its accounts. Again, if you add that to the money uh, that's already there, that means there's a substantial amount sitting in Fre Freckleton's coppers. And I don't think it's unreasonable to ask why it's not, uh, the, the park is not being funded by these bodies. I'm, as I say, I'm not saying we shouldn't fund uh, this. I'm saying until we have looked into it closely, I believe that we should suspend this and then when we have all the answers, um, make a decision at a later date. Keep the money in the accounts, but don't use it at the present time. And that's all I'm moving, because I believe that if we agree this today we have um, Wharton who are needing money for their part. We had a situation where in Westham they raised funding and they were asked to pay Fileborough Council for the services that um, File gave to them in, in, in uh, getting a master plan drawn up. It's got to be equitable, it has to be fair and I would move that this um, decision be deferred until we get all the, all the relevant Answers. Thank you. Councillor Hayhurst, then Councillor Silverwood. Excuse me. Well, Mr. Mayor, um, I supported this budget tonight, and um, the Cabinet were congratulating themselves on good sound management and um, how well they'd um, looked after the finances of filed. I have to say that this suggests that that's not the case with the capital budget. Um, again, I, like Councillor Olds, have got, have got no problems with supporting a contribution from Farborough Council to Freckleton for the horrific situation which happened um, uh, during the war. But the fact is, our, cap our capital budget is a finite um, budget. It is something which we have had very little to spend over the years. And the situation is that we should guard it with our lives, basically. We should make sure that anything we spend from that capital budget is sound and, has, and hopefully has got much funding as well. And yet we seem to have just completely capitulated on this occasion because we've heard that Freckleton is one of the most prosperous parishes. And I would have expected Freckleton to have done the donkey work before they came to this council. Again, I've got no problem about supporting Freckleton in this instance. But I would have thought that Freckleton would have explored with our officers every opportunity to get match funding and grants for this. And I would have thought that in the circumstances that Freckleton probably would have been